Royal and humble greetings to each and every one. On this video, we're going to be talking about Amandebele Kingdom family tree. A Bandunguni ethnic group currently inhabiting parts of South Africa, majority in Bumalanga province, who are famously known for their traditional dress, colorful blankets, and colorful art. We're going to be looking at their origins, lineage, and highlighting historical figures like Chief Musi and the division of the Ndebele groups. The impact of wars with the Boers particularly the siege at Konom Chahelo, leading to the scattering of Ndebele people and their retention of cultural unity. The establishment of Kwandebele as a self-governing territory in 1981 and subsequent disputes with the royal family. The Ndebele people's history traces back from East Africa moving southwards and assimilating the sand people in northeastern South Africa. Following the collapse of the Kingdom of Zimbabwe in 1450, two main groups, the Nguni and the Soto Tswana, emerged south of the Limbombo River. Over the centuries, these groups diversified into distinct cultures. The Ndebele, a resultant group, played a role in the historical development between the 1400s and early 1800s. Chief Ndebele founded the Ndebele Nation in the territory of the Bata and the Shubi, south of the Drankensberg Mountains, with the Elundi as the capital. Jonono, Chief Ndebele's great-grandson, moved north, settling near Ladysmith, Nanas, who survived after being poisoned, succeeded Jonono. Mafana, Nanas's brother, led a northwestward migration, but drowned attempting to cross the Fall River. Mlanga, after Mafana, managed to cross the Fall River, settling in modern day Ranfontein. Musi, Mlanga's son, faced hostility from Soto and Swana tribes, prompting a northward move. Musi established Kwamnyaman and Emaruleni settlements along the Apis River, creating a thriving homeland and engaging in trade. The word Apis is Africans, meaning small monkeys, a reference to a historical abundance of favored monkeys in the Apis river banks. The Ndebele history involves territorial expansions and leadership changes. Under Mapena I, the Manala controlled northern Gauteng, with settlements like Kwamnyamana and Kwamaza. Nzunza, breaking away, established Kwasimkulu as the first Nzunza capital. Successive rulers faced threats from Nguni tribes and so Totswana people. Bongwe moved Tenzunza capital to Kwamaz, successfully resisting Bahatla tribes in the north. Sindeni continued campaigns, defeating Bahatla and Bakwangadiming. Mahlangu faced challenges in expanding territory, succeeded by Pasalwana, Maridini, Dalanyana, Nguezana, and Zela. Nzela's unsuccessful campaign led to Gembe's abandonment of his brothers, resulting in Mkhambuli's death. Gembe's actions were deemed unforgivable, leading to Makotongo being named 
Gwenyam, founding a new Nzunza dynasty. In the early 1820s, Sibindi of the Manala attempted diplomacy with Mzilikazi Kumalu, offering his daughter for peace. However, Mzilikazi betrayed the truce, leading to conflict. Sibindi united the Ndebele against Mzilikazi, but his defeat resulted in the sacking or removal of people in Kwamnyaman. Mzilikazi expanded his empire, establishing a capital named Ekupumulene. In 1826, Mokotongo faced assaults in Guamaza, prompting retreat to Esikunjin. Despite resistance, Mokotongo was captured, tortured, and killed by Mzilikazi. The conquest continued, and Mzilikazi established the capital Kungwini in December 1826, ruling for over a decade. The Kumal suppressed Ndebele attempts to regain dominance. Sipoko and Somtei briefly succeeded as Nzusa rulers, but faced challenges and were killed by Mzilikazi's forces. Mzilikazi's hold on the central Transvaal faced threats from the four trekkers in 1836, leading to confrontations and his eventual migration northward, settling in Matebele land, present-day Zimbabwe, in 1840. After Mzilikazi's defeat, conflict erupted between four trekkers and African kingdoms, as settlers claimed lands belonging to groups like the Nzunza and the Manal and the Bel. The Manal who were badly affected, saw successive rulers assassinated by Mzilikazi's forces. Silamba, attempting to reclaim lost lands, faced resistance from four trekkers, particularly the Bronkhorst brothers. Silamba eventually settled in Valmanstal, establishing Komchekechek. Among the Nzunza, Jambowe's blindness disqualified him, leading to Mapoko's selection as king. Mapoko moved the capital to Mkholin, fortifying it. He formed alliances, notably with Chief Malewa, securing the northern border. An episode of irregular clashes erupted as settlers enroached on Nzunza lands. Mapoko's forces initially resisted winning battles. The Boers settling in Larstrif sparked a war culminating in Zuza Vigri in 1847. The Sand River Convention exacerbated tensions, recognizing Boer independence without addressing African inhabitants. In 1861, Sekakune's expansion strained relations with Mapok leading to conflict. Mapoko initially resisted, but eventually submitted to Sekukune's rule in 1863. The Boer and Zunza tension resurfaced, resulting in failed attacks on Kanom Chahel in 1863 and 1864. Despite victories, Zunza territory diminished gradually in size. In late November, War forces reinforced with troops from friendly African tribes launched attacks against Mamburu and faced unexpected resistance from the Nzunza. Battles ensued, including the capture of Kwamkhali and the prolonged siege at Kwapondo. A unique strategy involving dynamiting fortifications was employed against Gwandom Chahel. Facing imminent starvation, Tenzunza surrendered in July. After months of attrition, Nyabela and Mamburu were tried, with Mamburu executed. The harsh post war settlement led by the dismantling of Amandebele structures, land distribution to poor fighters, and forced labor for defeated followers. Nyabela 
served a life imprisonment, later released, and died in 1902. The Ndebele country was annexed, marking a significant impact on the region. Now, Amandebele can trace their lineage back to Ndebele, who is the founder of the nation, originally a chief in the lands of the Bata and the Lul. Nkalangana, or known as Langa, Dungwa, Jonono, Nanasi, Mafana, Nlanga, Musi. Musi's sons were Manala, Nzunza, Tumbini, Skosana, and Sibasa. After Musa, there was a succession dispute fought between his two sons, Manala and Zunza, over the throne. This is where the Ndebele kingdom was separated into two houses. Manala continued the main royal line. Nzunza moved away to establish his own. Now, there's a lot of controversy surrounding this topic, with many historians saying that Manala was the rightful heir, but Musi handed over the kingship stick to Nzunza. Now, starting with the Manala lineage, he was followed by Nchele, Makuchona, Mrau, Buyambo, Mapena the first, Ntibani, Sibindi, Mvula, Mkibe, Silamba, Mkelangin, Mapena the second, Mbongo the first, Mbulawa, Makosonge the first, Mbongo the second, then King Makosonge the second, formerly known as Inok Mapena. King Makosonge the second Mapena is the reigning monarch of the Ndebele people, or Amandebele of South Africa. He is from the Manala Ndebele clan and has been king since 1986, after succeeding his late father, Mbongo the second. Ingwenyama Makosana II is currently the longest serving king in South Africa. Now, looking at the Nzunza lineage, he was followed by Mkheja, Makopoli, Bongwe, Sindeni, Mashangu, Paswana, Maritili, Mtalanyana, Mwezana, Nzela, Mkhabuli, Makotongo, Sipoko, Somtei, Mapoko, Mkepuli, Fene, Maicha, Mabuso Mapoko the second, Nyumbabo Maicha the second, then Mbusi Masangu, now Ingwenyama Mapoko the third, formerly known as Mbusi Masangu is the current reigning monarch of the Nzunza Mapoko people, who are part of the larger Ndebele people of South Africa. Now that was the Ndebele Kingdom family tree, from King Ndebele, who founded the nation, to King Musi, who was the last king of the United Ndebele Nation, all the way to King Makosonge II Mapen, who is the official recognized king of Amandebele. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Until the next one, thank you for watching.